When most people think of developing fast and powerful kicks, the first thing that they think of are developing strong legs. When they think of developing strong legs, the first muscle group they are probably going to think of are the thigh muscles or quadriceps. When training the thigh muscles, there is probably a belief that they will grow or be trained uniformly as long as there is some kind of burn going on in the legs. Despite this, there is evidence from sports science studies that suggest each individual quadricep muscle is capable of being trained to a different extent depending on the exercise used in training. The table on screen compares the rate of growth of four different quadricep muscles. These are the rectus femoris, the vastus lateralis, the vastus intermedius, and the vastus medialis. If you focus on the before and after numbers for the vastus muscles, you can see that the vastus muscles grow significantly with training. At this point, I think it's worth saying you may need to pause the video so that you can fully process the information. If you have noticed that the vastus muscles have grown significantly with training, next look at the rectus femoris numbers. If you look at the rectus femoris numbers for the full squat training group, you can see the muscle size actually decreases with training. In the half squat training group, the rectus femoris has a very minor, essentially negligible increase in size. The study from which I got the table is displayed on screen. Effective squat training with different depths on lower limb muscle volumes. It's an open access paper and there's a link in the description if you are interested in investigating. So you may be wondering why does the rectus femoris matter? It matters for kicking because there's a lot of evidence in the sports science literature that the rectus femoris is the most important quadricep muscle involved in kicking. And if you're training squats exclusively to improve your kicking power, you may in fact be leaving the most important muscle untrained. Looking at the study title on screen, Effectiveness of the Roundhouse Kick in Elite Taekwondo Athletes. Once again, the study is an open access study that can be found in the description. I'm not going to get deep on the methods here. I have done that on other videos in the past, but in short, they attach electrodes to the body of the kickers to measure which areas of the muscle were the most active. To look at a quote from the results of this study, they find quote, during the pre-impact phase, all athletes clearly demonstrated the greatest activities of the rectus femoris compared to other muscles. They then referenced some other studies which also found the same thing. To quote again, they say, quote, Thus, this could indicate that the rectus femoris could be primarily responsible for executing powerful kicks. If you are training for kickboxing, Muay Thai or MMA, then you may say, okay, that's Taekwondo, but my kicking technique is different. That may be true, but there is a significant overlap. It's likely that the knee raise at the start of the kick, aka hip flexion, is more important in the Muay Thai style roundhouse kick, whilst the knee extension of the kicking leg is more important in the Taekwondo style roundhouse kick. The other contributors to the power of the kick may be a horizontal movement to slide into range, also in some cases, and it's most obvious with a jumping roundhouse kick, but generally there is a vertical extension through the non-kicking leg. For these movements, such as the horizontal slide into range and the extension of the non-kicking leg, squatting may improve kicking power as a single joint quadricep vastus muscles are involved in these actions. A reason why training the rectus femoris is beneficial for kicking is that the muscle passes over two joints, so it is involved in both hip flexion and knee extension. In practical terms, in terms of a roundhouse kick, this means it's involved in the knee raise at the start of the kick and also the knee extension as the shin or instep extend towards the target. So having seen that the rectus femoris muscle is an important muscle, what are some of the best ways to train it? The knee extension machine that you find in most gyms is one way to train it, as modeled by Usain Bolt here. The issue with the knee extension machine is that it's difficult to go fast and be safe whilst using it. That said, you should still be able to get results that transfer to kicking if you're new to it. Also, if you're watching this video from an MMA training perspective, Using the knee extension machine may also be beneficial for your strength or muscular endurance if you're using butterfly guard. 
As the rectus femoris is used in both knee extension and hip flexion, any exercise that performs either of these actions will train the muscle to an extent. For the most specific results, attaching the band to resist the type of knee extension used in the roundhouse kick is likely the best option. As bands allow you to go faster and leave wiggle room for the knee joint, these are likely a more specific way of training the rectus femoris for kicking. The final thing I'm going to say here is that while squats aren't a great exercise for fast and powerful kicks, they are a good exercise for other martial arts techniques such as punching or a double leg. So while squats may be a good exercise for most people, going crazy for them and chasing a big squat number is likely a more foolish approach than doing a more varied selection of strength and conditioning exercises.